Hey everybody, welcome back to Box Check. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I modified this Titan Attachments uh, stump bucket to fit on my AGT Industrial LRT23 Chinese Mini Skid Steer. But first, before I begin with all the modifications that I did to this, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about this stump bucket. First off, I, I didn't buy this brand new, so I can't tell you what model it is. Uh, all I can tell you it 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 definitely is a Titan Attachments. Um, and I believe it is made for, you know, the, the Kubotas, the Vermeer, the Toro Dingo, perhaps. Because, like I said, I did have to do a little bit of tweaking to make this work. Uh, but as far as the stunt bucket goes, this thing is way more fun to operate than the, the original bucket that comes with this mini skid. Uh, so this thing right here, first off, it can dig. Uh, whereas the other bucket that comes with the machine, it's more of a scraper. Uh, but this can do a little bit of digging. And... Uh, of course, pretty much whatever you contact with this thing, it's it's going to destroy or pull it out of the ground. Another thing I like about this is it has a little bit of reach to it. I could actually pull this mini skid all the way up to that truck, and uh, this bucket can can reach to the other side. Granted, this is just a little Toyota Tacoma, but uh, still, it's got some reach to it. And then additionally, with these teeth right here, uh, you can actually, it's a good lifter. You can put a strap to this, a chain to it, and pretty much lift whatever you wanted to, uh, as long as the machine weight will handle it. So onto the modification, here's what I did. Uh, in a previous video, I explained that, that this AGT Industrial RT23, it has uh, these pins that are 14 inches on center. And these pins do, do work with this without modification. However, the height doesn't necessarily work with it. And so let's start with the upper portion what I did on the upper portion, and then I'm gonna to go to this lower portion. The way this mounting plate works is there's a beveled edge. There's a beveled edge on the attachment, and there's also a beveled edge on the mounting plate. But you want as much contact as possible from the left side all the way to the right side where that beveled lip, we'll just call it, should contact all the way up here. And that's gonna give you the greatest, I guess, mounting strength. So it's not jiggling around. So with that said, uh, whenever I went to mount this on there, it wouldn't go, it wouldn't make contact because of this knuckle. So what I had to do, modification number one, was I made a cutout so this knuckle can go in. Now one thing I do want to you know, draw your attention to is you're not just giving it space uh, for that, that beveled edge to contact up here, but you also want enough space where it clears that grease fitting. So whenever this bucket does curl up, uh, this, this metal is going to either touch or move past that. And you wanna make sure there's enough clearance so it doesn't clip that off. All right, so that's modification number one. And once I got that, uh, again, that top plate, uh, we got good contact across here, but then came the next problem and that's these pins. So the pins width, you know, was fine, but the length of the pins and how, how well they engaged in the original plate, that, uh, that hole that's created for them it was just barely hanging on. I mean, just barely hanging on. And so there was a lot of play. All right, bringing the camera down here, uh, we're on the right side. Uh, so you can see, it kind of looks like there's three plates stacked on top of each other. That one on the bottom is the original. These two on top is the modification. Uh, but this one on the bottom, you can see down here, they got a little bit extra metal right there where uh, that pin would go in. It was literally only in there about an eighth of an inch, so I had to get some extra metal in here anyway, uh, so that pin has more meat to, you know, to keep it in place. Okay, so I have the stump bucket disconnected from the machine now, and that's actually why I pulled this up to the truck. Uh, that way I could rest the bucket right here and we could separate these two. And I think we can learn a little bit more about this uh, in this condition. So let's start right here with the actual mounting plate. Now we can't really change anything about the mounting plate. In my very first video, I believe is the one it was, I give uh, pretty detailed measurements of this. And I know that these pins are 14 inches on center. That's not the issue. Um, and again, here's a, a view of that beveled edge. You know, it's kind of like a, a knife edge and that goes up into the attachment. And like I said before, you want as much contact as possible uh, for a secure fit. 
Moving on down here to the bottom, you can see that it does have these, I'll just call them shoes. Uh, I'm not really sure what you call these things, but they're about three quarters of an inch thick. And I'm assuming that this, the one, you know, there's one there and there's one here. I'm assuming that it protects uh, this joint in some manner. Uh, but those also fit in here. They fit right in that area. But now let's move on to the actual modification. So what we got here is two pieces of 3-8 steel stacked on top of each other and welded. Now this is not beautiful steel. There's no telling how old this is. It's probably 40 or 50 years old. It was actually in my father's uh, barn. He found it for me. And it's a perfect fit with some, with some you know, cutting and modification. But the way I've designed this, uh, again, it's two 3-8 pieces stacked on top of each other, welded to the attachment, and it allows those shoes to go in on both sides, but it's also going to give some meat so those pins can engage, and it's not going to allow this thing to move left or right. And it also shims so it can't move up and down. It's a perfect fit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up on my computer. I was actually going to get a fabricator to make these. Uh, and I've got a diagram on my computer that has measurements in case you're interested in measurements. I wouldn't you know, go, I wouldn't solely go on these measurements because your machine, your machine's mount, it might be just slightly different than mine. Uh, but as far as the AGT LRT 23, it, that is the exact measurements I needed. And I love the thing. It's perfect. All right, let's go to the computer and take a look. Okay, we're at the computer and I have an image pulled up of a diagram that I created of the two steel plates that we needed for this modification. And I created this diagram with the original intent that I would give this to a fabricator and they would make this and it would be beautiful. Uh, but at the end of the day, after capturing all these measurements, I just ended up doing it myself for free. My dad supplied me with free metal uh, that's old, but it works. It's a stump bucket. It doesn't have to be pretty. Uh, so anyway, the, these are the measurements that I have. It was a good reference for me, and I hope it's a good reference for you. You can screenshot this if you want to. Uh, but here's my little disclaimer. Don't solely go off of these measurements because your mini skid, uh, the mounting plate on it, might be just a little bit different than mine the stump bucket you have if you're getting one. It may be a little bit different than mine as well. But this is what I needed for my mini skid. So uh, this corner down here, this is my reference corner where most all the uh, measurements are captured from. Uh, but the overall length, in order to fit those shoes in there but have as much metal as possible uh, to surround these uh, pins, would be 15 and 7 eighths of an inch. Uh, and then of course the width would be two and a half inches, and then the width of the slots where the pins engage would be three quarters of an inch. That's actually a nice measurement where they in engage, you know, pretty freely, uh, but th there's not a great deal of play there. And that's really what you want. Um, and I'm not going to go over the rest of the measurements. You can see that for yourself. But this is the diagram for each plate. Okay, guys, there it is. That's how I modified the stunt bucket to fit on the AGT LRT23. And like I said, this thing is a perfect fit now with that modification. So highly recommend. Uh, it's a fun little attachment. I can't wait to use it again. Till next time.